Hoffa, thanks so much for having me in your beautiful home. Uh, <laughs> I think the last time I saw you was on the mats at the 2016 Worlds. Tell me a little bit uh, about your preparation for that tournament. My preparation was good. I feel like nowadays um, I don't worry too much about strength and conditioning. I don't do a lot of strength and conditioning. I feel like, you know, I was able to build my body for the division. I feel strong. I feel like I have everything I need. Now what I try to do is to perfect my techniques. I try to work on my timing. And, um, you know, I think the guys in my division, they don't have the same body coordination that I have. So I, I think, mm -hmm. you know, I have this, the experience, the, the technical level and the strength that I need to go there and win. So I feel pretty confident. Why did you get away from the strength conditioning? Because you've become so efficient over the years or you feel like your strength and speed is sufficient for the tournament at this point in your career? Why? I learned how to use jiu-jitsu to get faster and stronger. Mm. You know, I don't have to go there and lift the weights. I feel like I know now I have enough experience to just use jiu-jitsu to get faster, get stronger. And, you know, I think that's the smartest thing to do because mm -hmm. I'm going to compete in a jiu-jitsu tournament. I'm not going right. to go there and just lift the weights. So I think that's the smartest way to prepare yourself. You know, it's just do jiu-jitsu. That's what you're going to do, you know. So that's, that's the way that I like to prepare myself. Since I moved here to California, that's what I have been doing, you know, just strict jiu-jitsu, not worrying too much about going to the gym and lift the weights, and it's working pretty good. What, what was a typical training day uh, for preparation for this tournament? I was waking up early, like 6 a.m., and then doing a nice driving session. I, I think driving is super important, right? You, you have to have a good timing. Uh, your techniques, the, the techniques need to be sharp. Like if you're sloppy, like during the fight, you're gonna end up in a bad position. Mm -hmm. So um, just visualize, you know, everything that was going to use in the competition and mm. kind of like trying to recreate the situation. You know, I was asking people to move how my opponents were, you know, were going to move in the competition. Mm. So just trying to simulate the, the, the competition. And then um, I was doing a really hard competition class right after the drilling. So I was drilling for pretty much one hour and then doing a competition class. That's pretty much just sparring. You know, we don't do a lot of techniques in the competition class. It's right. just hard, hard sparring, you know. So then I go home, of course, I, I take a little break, eat, you know, take a nap, rest. So then um, at nighttime, I go back to the academy and then I train again. It's not so intense, it's more study the techniques, making sure that, uh, you know, I take the time to stop and see what's working, what's not working, mm. and, and just fix all the little mistakes. Because, you know, you're going so, so hard in the competition class, but if you just keep going hard doing something that's wrong, like doing wrong techniques, and you're gonna be really good at doing the wrong thing. You right. know? So right. you gotta take, take the time to stop and, and see what's wrong and, and just fix everything. And, and how many days a week are, are you training? I was training from um, Monday through Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday just taking a break, you know, enjoying my family. I think it's important to take a break, you know. Uh, I think like, you know, when you're young, you, you just want to go crazy, like you want to go hard, you know, every day, Saturday and Sunday, mm -hmm. and then you end up overtraining. I think, you know, like time and experience helps you to, um, you know, learn about, about this. Like you don't want to be burned out for the competition. It, it's important, I think it's part of the training right. to stop, recover your body and your mind, I think. Sometimes the body's not tired, but your mind's tired. You know, if you, uh, the way I see I'm overtraining is when I'm not like excited to go there and, and train, you know? So if I'm like, oh man, I hate juice, I don't wanna go, it's time to, you know, take a little break, right. recover yourself, let, let your body and your mind rest, and then you do it again. You know, if you just keep pushing, you're gonna, you're gonna break, you know. And that comes from figuring things out over the years and making mistakes, yeah. or di right? To be honest, I think I competed like so many times, like, you know, just burn out and I was able to win, sometimes I lost, but it, it was good, like, you know, it's a lesson that you have to learn over the years and it makes right. you better and it gives you the experience that you need when you're, you know, you're teaching somebody, you become a professor or a coach. You, you need to know, that's why I think it's important to compete you know, even if you, you don't want to be a, a, a star, like a jiu-jitsu star, but mm -hmm. it's nice to go there and get this experience from the competition so one day you can pass on to somebody. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, over the years I was able to learn about, about overtraining and, you know, just being able to 
listen to your body and, and find a balance because at the same time you don't want to be like, oh, I'm a little tired, so I'm going to just take a break. So then right. you're lazy, right? So I think that's a real struggle that every uh, professional athlete will find is to find a balance between, you know, listening to your body, but, you know, you don't want to be lazy. You don't want to overtrain. So you have to right. f- find a nice balance there. And what works for you. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's why it's important to have somebody on your side, you know, have a, a really good coach, a really good professor, because, you know, sometimes, like, I, I find myself in this situation a lot because I think every champion do, because, you know, you, you just want to go as hard as possible. You want to mm-hmm. go 100% the whole time. So you need to have somebody that's going to tell you, look, you need to just recover, like, just take a little break, you know. And at the same time, if you're being lazy, you need somebody to say, like, look, you have to go hard. Like, you know, you're not going to win if you're, if you're just training like this. So I think it's important because, you know, if you don't have somebody that's there watching you and, and helping you during the preparation, you, 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 you can get lost. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about your brother, Guillermo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously a phenomenal competitor in his own right and, and someone who's watching you all the time. What is your relationship like and how does he help you for each and every tournament? Man, I think, you know, having him, like, there with me the whole time, it, it gives me uh, a moral support that, that I need, you know, because, it, you know, it's a lot of pressure to go there, put everything on the line, and, you know, it's just like, if you don't have somebody that's there helping you to deal with the situation, mm-hmm. you know, helping you to stay motivated, stay focused, you know, you're going you're gonna to break. I think, you know, having yeah. somebody that understands, you know, the whole thing, like somebody that was there before, in the same situation, I think it's important, you know, so, and, you know, now he's not competing anymore, so I think he can focus 100% in, in helping me, because when right. he was there competing, you know, it, it was tough, because he had to worry about himself, and what about me, and mm-hmm. the same thing for me, like, I was thinking about my fight, but I was also thinking about my brother's fight, a lot of times, he's fighting the finals, and then, you know, right after him, it, it's my turn. Right. So it's really tough. It, it's a very difficult situation because, you know, your emotions will be there, you know. What happens if he loses the fight and then I have to fight? You right. Know? It's right. super hard to deal with this. So, but he decided to stop. You know, he was able to win four times. You know, he has nothing to, to prove to anybody. He, you know, he was, you know, he was, you know, able to go there, win four times. There's, there's nothing else to do. So he decided to stop and just be there for the students, for me. So it's obviously been a big benefit for you. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You know, it's being, it's being easier. You know, it's been great for me. How much note taking do you do, like for your own sessions? Do you take notes and do you watch video of your competitors to kind of study what they do? Yeah, I actually do. What I do, I like to, you know, finish my training and then just try to see everything that was going on. I don't just take notes like of things that I was doing wrong. Mm. But I also like to write down everything that's that's working. Right. You know, so I have you know I have my notebook and everything is in there. So I see, okay, this is working, this is not working. So why is this not working? Am I doing mm-hmm. something wrong, or is it just a bad technique that I need to get rid of? Right. So it's super important. You know, I try to be super smart. Okay, study the game. I see some people they just wanna you know be rough, go hard, and be strong. But I think it's important to be strong. You know, but uh. At the same time, like jujitsu is like chess. Like you need to be smart. If you mm-hmm. don't, if you don't understand the game, if you don't take the time to study the game, you're gonna stay behind. Yeah. What was your mindset like uh, heading into this tournament? Like I'm always really confident. I feel like you know I was able to build my confidence throughout the years, like training and getting a lot of experience, losing, winning. Mm-hmm. You know, I was able to build my confidence. So. I can tell you that every time that I put my name in a competition, it's because I believe that I'm going to go there and I'm going to win, mm-hmm. you know. Otherwise, I would never put my name there. I would sure. never put my name there and, and, and in my mind I'm thinking, oh, I don't know if I'm going to win, like, it, this is so hard, maybe, maybe I'm going to lose. No, if I put my name there, it's because I really believe that I'm going to win. So, I, of course, I can't control the outcome. I can't say... I will win, I promise I'm going to win, but in my mind, I have the trust that I will. But, uh, you know, for this competition, I got sick one week before, mm. and um, that's something you never expect, you know. Like, everything we do for six months, that's, you know, how much I train. Like, I always 
go to Brazil in December. Uh, when I come back, I start training. So I train, I train from uh, January to June for the competition. So, you know, six months is a lot mm. of time. So everything you're doing, like every day, is to make sure when you get to the competition, you're in your best shape, the best mm -hmm. shape of your life. So you can give 100%. So when you get sick, it kind of like it, it throws you off. Like, mm -hmm. So it, it takes a lot of effort. Like it takes you, uh, you know, a lot of effort to be able to focus, to be able to overcome a situation like this. So the week before I got pink eye, then uh, I got strep throat because I was infected. I went to the doctor. Jeez. I had to take antibiotics for seven days. Um, you know, so that was on Thursday. So next Thursday, the Thursday before the competition, I started feeling better. Friday, I was better. I said like, okay, I, I will compete. At some point I was thinking, man, wow. maybe uh, I will not compete, you know, because you don't want to go there and not be 100%. And then if you lose, you say, oh, I was sick. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, you're right. Like, right. You, you know, it's such a loser. Like, you know, you lose, now you say you're sick. So I don't want to do that. So I want to make sure that, you know, if I, if, if I go there and if I compete, you know, I'm okay. So I thought I was okay. I was, maybe my mind was trying to tell me, oh, you're okay, you're good. But deep down, like, everybody knows, like, if you're taking antibiotics for seven days, you're not going to be okay. You're not going to be 100%. So, but on Saturday, like, that's the first day, right, the, the first fight, I was able to go there. When my fight was easy, I was able to get submission, felt good. I was thinking, man. I'm fine, okay, no problem. But then on Sunday, it was a little bit more intense, like good guys, like tough fights. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got to the finals where you have to wait for four hours, I think that was very difficult. You know, usually I'm okay to wait for four hours because th there's a big break, you know, between the semifinals and the finals. And usually I go there, I take a nap, I'm pretty good like just relaxing my body and trying to relax my mind. But this time, man, I had a hard time because I started feeling like dehydrated, very uncomfortable. I didn't feel 100%. So it was really hard to keep my confidence. That, that's something that, you know, man, you're in the finals, the most important fight of the competition, and then you're not feeling confident. Right. Like, man, that's, that's pretty hard, you know. So it was important to have my brother there, always talking to me, always, you know, giving me, you know, a little bit of motivation, you know, so I can keep moving forward and right. just keep pushing in the wings. So when I won, was like really rewarding, you know. I was super happy. You guys, you can see how I was celebrating. I was th th thanking God a lot because, and I believe that, you know, things like this, like this, happens for for a, a reason. Like for this competition, like be, like when it was getting like maybe two, three weeks before the competition. I was thinking to myself, man, why are you doing this again? You know, why, why you're putting everything on the line one more time? Like you don't need to do this. Like mm -hmm. because before my goal was just to break the record, be the guy that won the most in the division, and, and I did that la last year. You know, mm -hmm. I won five times. Hoyer, Hoyer Grace won four. Cabrinha won four. Okay, now I have five titles, so I don't need to go there and do it again. Mm -hmm. But I decided to do it again. But Two weeks, three weeks before the competition, my mind was telling me, why? Why do this again? Why put everything on the line? Why, why are you going to risk everything? So I started to kind of like lose motivation, you know? I was mm -hmm. getting like a little, a little bit sad and, you know, I, I was upset. I was not like fired up for the competition. And I think like getting sick was kind of like a, a wake up call because when I saw the situation where I could not compete. I had to just sit down and watch somebody go there and take what's mine, you know, take my spot. Yeah. That hurts a lot. So I think maybe, you know, God saw that I was kind of like give, giving up to this temptation, you know, like mm -hmm. ah, don't compete. It's just mm -hmm. not worth it to go and do it again. And then I kind of like got this wake up call. And then when I got the feeling where I was just trying to, visualize somebody going there and, and just getting my medal being the first place and just taking everything that I have been working so hard to to uh, achieve you know so it was 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 something that was uh different and, and a really good experience for me it's a, like a life lesson 
where do you find that motivation? Because, you know, as you said, your six world championships, you've done thousands of matches. Why compete again? You know, where does it come from? What inspires you? For sure, like my family, you know, everything that I do is for them. Like I think like competing, um, winning, it creates a lot of opportunities that, you know, it helps me and my family to accomplish everything that we want. So mm -hmm. they motivated me a lot. Like my students, they, they inspire me because I see how much they want to be like me, like my brother, how much they want to be successful. You know, they want to win, they want to be the best. So they inspire me to go there and do it again. So I lead by example. I think mm -hmm. that's important. You know, I'm not just saying like, oh, here's how you need to do do this, do that. No, I'm there doing with them every day, showing them how to do it. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that, you know, when I put together, it, it, it inspires me. So that's why I keep doing it, you know. Why did you originally get into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Why did you start training? So actually my cousin, he's the one that started training Jiu-Jitsu. He was doing karate, you know, in Brazil. Uh, he was doing Judo, but then I guess he didn't enjoy too much. Mm. He found jiu-jitsu, he started doing it, then eventually he got his blue belt. He started teaching young kids, like poor kids, no money to pay the membership, so he was teaching for free. So then he invited me, like, hey, you should come try a class. I was 11 years old, my brother was 12, yeah. And um, my mom and dad, they were having a hard time, like, you know, going through a divorce. So it was a very stressful uh, situation at home. So mm -hmm. my cousin, he kind of like, he saw that and he said, oh, you know, you guys should come, do jiu-jitsu, stay here with me, spend time in the academy, good environment. So that's how I started, you know, like since the beginning, I just fell in love with jiu-jitsu. I never stopped. I started competing really young. I think that was important because, um, you know, when you're young, I feel like you, you absorb everything. It's much easier to learn stuff. So. I think that was great for me, you know. I grew up in this environment, and I think that's one of the reasons why today I'm a very successful competitor, you know. I grew up in this environment. Did you ever see yourself winning six world championships as a black belt? To be honest, yes, I, I mm. always had this vision. I think that's something that's important is to have a clear vision. You know, since the beginning, I was white belt, and myself, my brother, and my professor, Hamo, we were always talking about this, the day that we were gonna be in the cover of the magazines, traveling the world, teaching seminars, mm -hmm. you know, uh, winning world title in the black belt division and inspiring people all over the world and having our own academy, our own business and being successful. So yes, like I had this vision mm -hmm. and I think, you know, that's the most important thing that you, that you need. If, if you wanna be great, you wanna achieve something uh, in your life, you have to have a, a clear vision and and then you just need to work hard for it. You know, when you start, you don't just go from here to here, right? There's steps. Yeah. So what were some of those pivotal steps, those pivotal experiences that kind of gave you the confidence to say, hey, I can, I can be the best in the world. I, this is something I could be mm -hmm. good at. I think there's a lot of stuff that you learn, you know, when you're uh, not just competing, but when you're training, you know, a lot of experience that when you you put everything together will help you. So I think in the academy, I was always the guy that, you know, I, I wanted to win every round. Like I mm -hmm. never wanted to lose. So I had this mindset in the academy. So I see some people like nowadays, they, you know, they, they, don't, they don't care about losing. And they try to say, you know, it's okay to lose. You have to lose to learn. And I do think like when you're competing, and you end up losing, you're gonna learn from that. And you have to be smart and you lost. So now you have to do something. You, you might as well just learn something, right? But you don't wanna lose. So I always had this mindset that I don't wanna lose. I hate it. It's the worst feeling ever. So in the academy, I was a competitor. You know, some guys, they try to be a really nice training partner and they wanna be a competitor in the competition. No, I'm a competitor every single day in the academy every round of sparring, everything I'm doing, I'm competing. I'm, I'm, you know, training my mind, training my body to become who I want to be. So I think that's the kind of experience that build 
that built the, the person I am today. Where do you think that comes from? You know, when I look at my own experience, I came up from a big family. I had four brothers, mm -hmm. one sister, and you know, I think we grew up kind of always competing. I, I don't know if it's, I think that's kind of where I got it from. Where does your competitive nature come from? <laughs> For sure, because I have a brother that's one year older. Mm -hmm. So man, when you have a brother, <laughs> It's nothing more competitive. You're than that. always <laughs> fighting. You're always yeah. competing for, over everything, anything. Like you know, I want this. No, I want this. I, I'm getting this. So we are always fighting. So I think that was good. People always ask me, like, you think having a brother was something that helped you to become who you are today, the competitor that you are today? Yeah. Hundred percent. Because you know, I grew up in this environment, like always competing over like anything. So that was really good. That that built the the mindset. You know, mm -hmm. this just. Yeah, like the competition feeling was always there. Uh, were there training partners or, or teachers, instructors, you know, Hamon Lemos and all mm -hmm. those guys? Who were those people that kind of, um, I guess, really inspired you as well throughout your career? For sure. Like, Maybe competitors? Yeah, you know? I think that there's a lot of people that, you know, they inspired me somehow. But like, I think the main person is Hamon mm -hmm. because he was not only my professor, like teaching me techniques and, and teaching me jujitsu. He was always the person that was telling me to believe that I had to believe to be able to go there and, and become who I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. You know, so he was, you know, he was not just my coach, my professor, but he was the person that made me, you know, trust myself, that gave me the confidence, that gave me that all the tools that I needed to be able to go there and, and, and win and not just win in jujitsu, but I, we in life, you know what I mean? So he was the one that really saw something in me and my brother, and he told you guys, look, I'm gonna help you guys, I'm gonna teach you guys jiu-jitsu, but you know, if you don't trust yourself, if you don't believe, you're not gonna make it. There's a lot of good people, a lot of good guys that they're really technical, they're strong, like they, they're good jiu-jitsu fighters, but they don't make it because mm -hmm. they don't have this mindset. So I think Hamon, he did the most important part. He was able to build our mindset. He made us believe that we could get there. And once you believe, you put in your mind that you can, nobody's gonna stop you. What do you think separates you as a competitor? Because listen, there's a lot of people, they work hard, they train like a professional, exactly. they have a good mindset, they have a good skill level, they have a lot of experience, but they can't get that first place or they, they fall short or they have a, they make a bad mistake. What is that difference that separates you from the other competitors, you think? I think that there's a couple like different things that I think that makes me different. First, I think the approach that I have to the competition is different than a lot of people. That, mm -hmm. That's why I win and I keep winning. Because I think like winning one time is one thing, but when you're winning every year, you win like over and over again. It's different, that, that's what makes you different, right? So I think my approach, my approach to the competition is something that's unique because when I'm in that situation under a lot of pressure, I'm able to embrace it. I, I see a lot of people getting there and they just, they can't handle it. It's just too much pressure, they break, they, they give up, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm able to go there and somehow I'm able to, uh, you know, control my mind and I embrace, I embrace the pressure. I think that's something that makes me special. You know, I think the, the willpower is, you know, something else that makes me super, um, uh, makes me different than, than other competitors. I think like, you know, I see people going there and they, they're in the finals, they're fighting, they, they're having a hard time. They just start like, you know, giving up. They start like ac accepting the loss. So like I said before, I'm a natural competitor. I never, I never see myself losing. I never uh, accept that. So I think the willpower that I have to go there and, and, and just be the best and, and make sure that people know that I am the best, it, it's something that changes the whole thing, you know, like makes me different. Uh, one thing that's interesting about you is not, not only have you elevated yourself as a competitor, you know, winning the world championships, there's other people that have done very well, but you also have been responsible for changing the game in many ways, right? Mm -hmm. Adding your techniques and your art, a lot of people are starting to mimic their game after you. How important and how cool is that <laughs> as, as a martial artist knowing that there's other people that are looking up to you but also employing some of the techniques that you kind of made famous? 
Yeah, I'm super happy to see this, to see the new generation, to see, uh, you know, the kids trying to become me. You know, right. they want to use my techniques. They want to do what I do. Because for me, it was always my goal to be somebody that was different. You know, I wanted to be unique, to be somebody that one day when I'm not competing, when I'm not like, you know, uh, in the spotlight people are gonna talk about me they're gonna they're gonna remember me so I want people to remember my name and I think if you just go there and you win a couple of times it, it's okay like a lot of people won't you know like mm -hmm. many times there, there's a lot of champions in this sport but there's not a lot of people that were you know that were, that were able to evolve the game to change the game right. to you know make the game more special so I think that's what we have been doing not only like creating new techniques but you, you can see how we run our school the way we we um, way the way we promote our image the way we control our career I think everything we are doing is just setting the bar really high is like uh, laying the, the the ground for for the new generation so I think it, that's something that's special, you know, because I'm not just adding a, a new technique to the game. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But like we're changing the business. We're changing the game. That's something that's going to help a lot of people in the future because uh, we saw many people that, you know, start doing jujitsu, but then they had to just give up and do something else because there was no way to make a living through jujitsu. But now, like what we have been doing, the platform that we have been creating with AOJ, I think it's going to change the game. It's going to be a good example for a lot of people that are going to come after us. Talk about your school a little bit and how, how important that is to you. This school is super important. Like creating AOJ, it's a dream that came true. You know, since I was super young, I had, I had this vision of one day being successful and being an example for other people. And uh, since I came to, to America for the first time in 2007, I had this vision to move here. You know, I, I love here. I think, um, you know, winning was my way of, you know, bringing my family here, moving to a, a place where I can have more opportunities, you know. Mm. So, and one of the goals was to open our school, our own business, and, and, and have something where people can, they can look and they can see, man, that, that's how it needs to be done. So AOJ is something that's super special for us. It's something that, you know, we have dedicated our whole life to accomplish. And, and what I see today is just like something that's unique, it's something that's uh, being an example to a lot of people, and something that's changing the game, something that's going to, uh, one day, we're going to, like in five, ten years, we're going to look to how people run a jiu-jitsu school and how they, they present jiu-jitsu to, to the families and, and to kids. And it's going to be different, you know. They're going to follow what AOJ is doing. So I think that's super important. You know, this competition, you are kind of linked with Cobrini in many ways. You guys have had a, a kind of a fierce rivalry over the years. What was it like not having that main rival in the final. Does it, did it affect you? Did it cause you to have less motivation? What, what is that feeling like? Uh, to be honest, like, I always expect to fight Kubrian mm. because he, he's a tough guy, right? He, he's good, he won many times, but um, when I saw that he lost the fight, it was like surprising. I thought I was going to face him in the finals, but uh, I try not to think too much about my opponent, mm -hmm. you know. I, I expect to fight him, yes, because that's, that's been happening for many years. So I think he's going to go to the finals because, you know, that happened before and the year before and, and many times before that. So, but uh, I, don't, I don't focus too much on the person that's coming after me. I always try to focus on myself because I think some, some people, they just focus too much on what's going on with other people, then they, they get lost. So I try to just focus on myself, you know, I stay, uh, I, I try to concentrate as much as possible to not, to not like, because sometimes like you're expecting something and then if something changes, it, it's like, it's a shock. Like you have no idea what right. to do. So I just try to focus on myself and whatever happens is just, you know, 
it doesn't change my feelings, it doesn't change what I'm gonna do, my emotions are the same, so I, I try not to worry too much about that. You know, th there's certain positions in jiu-jitsu where, you know, you miss a grip by an inch or, you know, your timing's off by a second and you miss the position, you lost the points or you lost the match. What is it that allows you to kind of make those right decisions? Is it just experience alone or is it, is there an intuition, kind of like a, a feeling, a gut feeling that you go by when you compete? Exactly. I think that, that that's it. Like, it's just a feeling because... To be honest, w when I'm fighting, I'm never thinking, oh, I'm gonna grab here, and now mm -hmm. I'm gonna switch this grip, and I'm gonna take this guy's back. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that, at least right. for me. Right. You know, it, to be honest, it's hard to remember what I did right after a fight. Yeah. Like sometimes, uh, you know, I finish the fight, and then people are asking me, oh, how did you do this? How, how did you take it back? How, how you got the submission? I have no idea. You know, I need to watch <laughs> the fight and see what I did. Yeah. I think I'm living in the moment, I'm in the zone, so everything I do is just, reaction is action reaction you know i'm reacting to the situation i'm living in the moment so it, it's not like it's not like a drilling session if you will right. you know what i mean it's different do you do meditation to help foster that is it something just you know competing you figure it out that hey i need to be very present and yeah you know i like to you know take the time to be just by myself and and, and talk to myself pray and just you know, I think it's important to be in your best shape, uh, you know, not just like your, your physical level, like your, you know, being strong or having a good cardio. That's important, okay? Your techniques are important. Like, of course, you need to have a, a very nice technical level mm -hmm. in order to win a competition. But I think your, you know, um, spiritual level, it needs to be, you know, very well prepared. So you have to concentrate to concentrate, you have to pray. That, that's what I do, you know. Mm -hmm. I try to be, uh, you know, I, I, I try to be in balance in everything that I do. Like my, my physical level, my technical level, and my spiritual level, they need to be all working together. You know, uh, for all of us, we see the final process. You're now the six time uh, world champion at the black belt level, but it seems that a lot of what forms us are the early stages in our lives. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the early stages in your life and how that has molded to who you are as a competitor today. Yeah, training in Brazil when I started when I was 12, like 13 years old, was, um, was very different. You know, Ramon, he was uh, a great coach, a great professor, but I can tell you he has like unique methods, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I remember like, you know, being on the mats, training, and then he would just tell everybody to stop. Just stop, stop, stop what you're doing. And then he would like tell people to circle up. He would call me and my brother and tell us to fight against everybody. You know, oh, you go with him, go with him, and then fight. Okay. How old were you at this, this, like this point? 13, 12, 13. You know, like growing up, he did that with hmm. us. 14, 15, he just kept on doing, you know. But uh, we had to fight everybody in the academy, you know, tap everybody out. And then he would put us to fight each other. So I remember me and Guy fighting for more than 30 minutes and then, you know, we were almost crying. We were so young, you know, a lot of pressure. Pe people watching, they're like, what, what's going on? What is this guy doing? Torturing them, <laughs> you know? So, that, um, but I think in his mind, he was building us into a great competitor. And mm -hmm. that's what he did, you know? Uh, for sure, it's like a uh, strange method, you know, like w we don't do this today. Sure. But I think it's important that he did for us you know, because it, it made us uh, learn so much about ourselves that, you know, we, we had to be very mature because in Brazil, like, we, we didn't have a lot of kids training with us. It was my brother and I and then just adults. So we were hanging out with older people, you know, and uh, I think they were helping us to just be more mature and have a, a nice vision of what we had to do to accomplish our goals. You know, so that's something that I think it's important is to be a good example. We had people in your lives that they were good examples for us, you know. So that's what we try to do today with the kids and, and, and people that are with us every day. We try to set the example so, you know, they, they have someone to look up to. I think that's, that's something that's important. That's, that's something we enjoy doing, you know. What, what do you think Hamon saw in, in you and your brother Geek? You know, I think like he met us like we were super young. He he was uh, he was in a stage of his life where he he wanted to prove to himself that he was 
a good professor that he could make people you know uh, he could make people uh, unique he could go there and and build two kids up and make them be like you know world champions be uh, you know great fighters so I think he took that job very seriously and then he did everything in his power to challenge us every single day to make us just go a hundred percent and 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 you know I think he accomplished his mission. I think he did what he what he wanted to do. You know, he had a goal, he had a vision, and then, you know, he had to do a lot of experiments. You know, with us, but it it worked. You know, everyone's experience is a little bit different. You know, when I started jujitsu and, and uh, mixed martial arts, you know, I, I didn't always have the support of my family or my parents. What, were your parents supportive? Or were they always there for the fights and when you were kind of coming up uh, for the tournaments? No, because right when we started training, my mom and dad, they, they got divorced. So um, I think that's why we were into jiu-jitsu so much. We were all day training. We were trying to escape this situation, you know, yeah. at home. So we were just like, okay, let's just stay here all day training and having fun, right? So because of that my mom was just working full-time two jobs trying to provide for us because my dad was not there my dad left so my mom was working all day and i think that was good for us if i can tell you one thing that made us get here today be able to win everything be able to be very mature be able to build a family like at a young age you know it's because we had to go through this experience you know my mom was not there every day doing everything for us. She had to work to provide for us. Mm -hmm. There was no option. So we had to be very mature. I was 11, you was 12. We had to be like, uh, you know, I was the man of the house, you was the man of the house. We were not kids anymore. We had to be there and be responsible. We had to learn how to behave, how to be mature, how to, you know, we had to grow up much faster than a lot of people, you know, usually like, you know, you enjoy your childhood, you have a lot of things that you do, you know, you go party with your friends, you do a lot of crazy stuff. We never did that. Since like 11, we were like, I was 11, you was 12, we were, you know, we were responsible, we were mature, we, we knew what we want, we knew what we wanted to do with Jiu Jitsu, with our lives, and, you know, we knew we wanted to be, build a family, we knew everything we wanted to do. So I think that was, really important Th that was the major factor that made us accomplish accomplish everything that we have today it was you know this situation between my mom and my dad putting us in a position where we have no option we have to be mature we have to grow up faster than everybody else and that's going to be good for us so Hamon also saw that because he was there you know he, mm -hmm. he he helped us throughout this process he was always guiding us so yeah, what's a great experience, you know, a tough one, a painful one, but, you know, super important for us. Was there ever a point, you know, at any point, I guess, when you started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu where you said, I don't know, this is too much, maybe I want to stop training, maybe I need to do something else, maybe I should do, get a regular job like everybody else? No, never, because uh, I was so young when I found Jiu-Jitsu that in my mind, that was the only option. I, I could not see myself doing anything else because I enjoyed doing Jiu Jitsu. I, I was happy there, like training, having fun. And in my mind, like since I started, I was thinking like, man, that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. That's, that's my job, you know, um, I'm gonna, and I, I had people that I was looking up to, like people that were traveling, they were doing seminars, they, they, they had their academy, their, their own business. So in my mind, I was like, man that's what i want to do i want to be like that and um yeah so i, I didn't have any any doubts in my mind i was i was always 100 percent sure that jiu-jitsu was my job you know was my my life i know that jiu-jitsu has obviously impacted my life tremendously you know in a variety of ways I'm sure mm -hmm. it has done it with you what is maybe the main thing that brazilian jiu-jitsu has done for you as an individual as a human I think it's like jiu-jitsu gives you life lessons, you know, it's not just about like learning techniques and, and just, you know, um, winning competitions. I think everything that you experience, you know, when you're training, 
when you're competing, when you put everything together, you learn a lot about yourself, you learn how to control your emotions, you learn how to be a better person. So I think that's what Jiu Jitsu did for us. You know, we were young and Jiu Jitsu was there just to build our, our character, you know. So like, we are the person that we are today because we start training Jiu Jitsu at a young age. So that's, that's something that was super important for us. So th that's the, you know, that, that's how I see, that's, that's the benefit that I, that I have, the, the most important benefit that I gained from Jiu Jitsu, from doing Jiu Jitsu. You know, it, it's extremely impressive when you look at your career because obviously uh, both you and your brother did well at the blue belt level, the purple belt level, the brown mm -hmm. belt level. But when you get to the black belt level, now you're dealing with guys who have a lot of experience, a lot more experience than you. As soon as you get into that level, why do you think you guys found so much success early on at the black belt level? Definitely because of my back background, you know, um, our experience in Brazil when we were young, I think it built us, it built our personality to be able to go there and win. And like you said, you know, a lot of people, they, they, they struggle with this transition from brown belt to black belt. Mm. But I think just because, uh, you know, our mind was so well prepared that we didn't feel anything. Like I was able to win ADCC in my first year in the black belt division. My brother was able to win uh, worlds in the black belt division. And for sure, it's not because our technique was better than everybody else or we were stronger than everybody else. It's just like our personality, our mind, you know. I think that's, the, that's what made us win. Earlier we were talking about um, your competitions and you would go in there and beat everybody, maybe tap everybody in the tournament, but mm. your coach, maybe Ramon, Ramon, would come over to you and say, I need you to do this, this, this and that. You know, why, why would he kind of keep pushing you and do you think that really is the reason why you did so well? Yeah, because I think that's what we do, you know, you, you, you want to you wanna make yourself feel good. You know, you wanna feel like you wanna feel like, oh yeah, I did a good job. You know, I'm good. But then it's important to have somebody to keep your feet on the ground. You know, mm -hmm. so Hamo was always doing that. You know, so I remember uh, coming back from a competition and just talking, oh, we did so good. We tapped that body. Like uh, the techniques are working so good. But he was there to remind us that what we did was nothing. Like fighting what like a, a small competition mm -hmm. in Brazil. Like that's nothing. Like if you have as your goal to win a small competition like this one, and you're so happy about it, you're gonna get distracted. You're gonna, you're not gonna have folks to keep moving forward and accomplish your main goal. And the main goal is to be a black belt world champion, to become a jiu-jitsu star, so you can use all your accomplishments for something good. You know, you can use that to provide to your family. You can use that to, you know, for a better life. So Hamon was always there to remind us that the goal was not to be here, but to be up here, you know. So he was always there, always pushing us. So every time we, we, we thought, oh, oh man, that, w that was good, we did good. We won this, we won that. He was, look, this is not enough. This is not what you guys, uh, this is not enough for you guys. Like what I see, you guys doing is something is something much greater than this. So he was always the one that had this belief, like this trust that we would, you know, be great. What's your focus like right now as uh, a martial artist? Is it about finding new techniques, creating new things, or about kind of honing in on the details of your technique? My goal is is to inspire people, like, you know, the way I fight today, the techniques that I use, is it's because I want people to see that and say, man, like, how he does that, I wanna learn that, I wanna, I wanna be like him. So I want people to look up to me, I want them to be inspired to, you know, I, I want that. I, I think, uh, you know, the way I move, the way I approach all the techniques, the way I behave in the competition, it, it, I think it's something that's different, that's unique, and I want people to learn that. I, I, that's why um, we are so passionate about teaching. We love teaching. Like we have a, a huge kids program, and uh, I want people to learn this style, to learn this mindset, to learn this this kind of technique. So one day they're gonna be the ones inspiring 
the next generation, you know. So that's something um, we love to do. What's your goal going forward? You've won the world championship six times. Uh, do you want to compete in the worlds again? It, it, do you want to go back to uh, the Abu Dhabi uh, submission world championships? W where do you go from here? You know what, if you ask me, or if you tell me, you know, if you're going to fight next year, you have to sign up now, I would sign up. Mm -hmm. You know, so th that's how I feel today. Right. So I would sign up, I would say, yes, I'm going to compete because, you know, uh, I'm not ready to let go of my position. Like, for me, it's very difficult to see somebody going there and winning the division that I have been winning for so many years. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't feel that I'm prepared to let go of this position. So, for now, yes, I'm still in the competition. Hoffa, that was awesome. Awesome catching up, man, and uh, hope to see you on the mat soon. Thank you so much. I had a great time. All right. Thank you. Thank you.